right, we're sitting here at the Emerald City Comic Con. I'm sitting with Michaela from uh, BAO Publishing. Exactly. Why don't you tell us a little bit about BAO Publishing? Well, it's actually called BAO, which is the Italian word for woof. Woof. Since our logo is a dog, it's really a no-brainer. Excellent. Well, actually, I've been working in comics in Italy for almost 15 years now, uh, mostly managing foreign rights okay. and doing translations. I'm a professional literary translator. I'm burdened with being the Italian voice of Tom Clancy. So verbally, I'm a very mm, dangerous person. I can disassemble a gun with words like nobody's business, but I never fired a shot in my life. So, Like Tom Clancy. Um, I, I don't want to know about that because no. he might come after me if I say things, something inappropriate about him. Well, you can go after him. You're the Italian Tom Clancy. <laughs> that might be confusing enough. But the thing is, at the end of last year, after 10 years working for others, I decided to strike out on my own and I formed this company with two other partners. And we're publishing mostly English language, but also some French material, graphic novels. It's just going to be 16 books in 2010 and twice as many the following year. And we're trying to change a paradigm, which is weird in Italy, that like you can only make a thousand copies of any given American book and make it in the retail market, and anything more than that is going to be unsold forever. We are trying to tap more the general bookstore market, and that's okay. why we're going for more, not really oddball, but offbeat books, and not just run-of-the-mill material. So that's the principle. What are some of the titles that you uh, have, have on schedule for next year? Well, for material that the American audience might be mm, familiar with, like the Bone prequel, uh, Rose, by Jeff Smith and uh, Charles Bess. Great title. A couple of Neil Gaiman children's stories, namely Crazy Hair with Dave McKean and Blueberry Girl, also with Charles Bess, who's coming next year to one of our convention appearances. And Michael Red's uh, Red Rocket 7, and John Lehman and Rob Guillory's Chew. And they're coming to Italy, and I take no responsibility if the storylines change after that, because we're going to spoil them with Italian food. And since the yeah. story is food-themed, we might actually have to change some of the way they think, uh, they think about food, I guess. And that definitely seems to be a concept, because how could that not? I mean, your food is delicious. Well, it's the your one thing food. I would, Look, I mean, one thing I would not change. Yours. You are responsible for all the food in Italy. No, I'm not, but I'm a foodie, so I can take yes. credit for some of the good things from there. <laughs> and then some French graphic novels, and that's about it for the year. But there's the book for which we actually uh, met virtually, yes. which is um, Robot 13. Which is great. Which nobody knows about in Italy, but we decided that since we have a lot of big guns in our roster, Absolutely. we could afford to actually promote something we strongly believed in, which is supposed to become a big gun in the future. So the one thing which is sort of like our rookie book of the year for us is R13, which we strongly believe in. In fact, it's debuting at the Italian equivalent of the San Diego Comic Con, which is the Luca Festival in late October, which is a very small festival with the same turnaround as San Diego, so it's pretty impressive. Excellent, excellent. Are there, uh, are there some titles you're excited that to get that you don't have yet? Uh, Stuff you're going after that you can talk about, or is it still hush hush? Well, probably it is. Uh, meaning we are going for the jugular in a couple of instances, and 2011 is going to be a huge year for us. But uh, the competition has ears and eyes everywhere, so yes, please, I won't say anything about those. So you're bringing a lot of uh, American and French comics to Italy. What about sending any of the others, like the Italian stuff, out? Well, we are producing some Italian stuff, which is going to come out early 2011, which I'm pretty excited about, and we're definitely going to try to go the opposite way. Um, for instance, we have this book coming out called Beta, which is brilliant because it's a non-manga style visually story about what if the giant robot stories were based in the real world. Okay. So you will definitely recognize some influences from the cartoons you loved as a kid, but it all looks like it's in the real world. So everything, all the, the tenets of the, of the cliches of the, of the genre, like uh, the old bespectacled professor and why is there a kid driving a component of the robot, makes sense. Sure. They have been explained in reverse engineering of the concepts. Okay. And it looks brilliant and it's like a 300 page book. Wow. In black and white. That's great. Which we definitely want to unleash on the world next year. But so far we're doing 90% imported material. It's important to us to bring to Italy the things we love about North American culture, which we sure. think we have been neglected so far. Okay, that's that's a great, great, great concept. I love it already. I'm excited. I want to read it. You want to read it. You Definitely. Read it. We're going to send you an Italian reading of the book so you can Excellent. hear just how weird they sound. <laughs> 
Um, you mentioned you've been in the field for 15 years, reading for how long? Well, uh, specifically, I, I, I was self-publishing when I was 20. Okay. And I was hired to be a foreign rights manager for a company when I was 24. I'm 34 now, so mm, you do the math. It's a, it's a chunk of change. Yeah, it, definitely. What were some of your first comics that got you into the field? Comics, from the American reader point of view, I probably started reading Batman when I was 15, and that changed the way I looked at the English language. Because, you know, you learn a lot of street talk from the commercial comics. Yeah. I was very Oxford style before that. CD and, uh, well, I, then I, I, I become a glutton for everything, and I read most anything. I, I, I must say that in my mid-30s, I'm cutting down on my superhero reading anyway. Which is okay. I mean, that happens to all of us. You're still reading comics. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention a couple of things we're doing this year, which an American reader might be familiar about, with their I Kill Giants by the Man of Action team. Yep. We're probably going to do more Man of Action books next year because we're good friends with them and we like the way they go very passionately about their concepts without sending them corporate. I mean, they're probably the yeah. only guys who actually did a cartoon series which has not gone corporate, even though Ben 10 is a huge success. They still put a lot of heart into even the most commercial things. And then we're doing Tiger, Tiger, Tiger by Scott Morse. Yeah. And I wanted to mention this because we're inviting Scott Morse and Mike Allred to Luca at the end of the year. And it's going to be a weird festival of American faces, we think, thanks to us, because we really are big on having guests. We, we love having guests. Come over, people. We want you. You can stay at his house. You don't want to stay in my house because you don't know my cats, but I can find you a nice place He'll to make stay. you food. It's wonderful. <laughs> With that. Thank you so much for coming by. It's been a pleasure. Excellent. Ciao.